the highly anticipated Grand Master is finally coming to Marvel Snap, and he is diverse. There is a lot we can do with this card, and it's gonna strengthen a couple archetypes in particular that need a little bit of love because they need what we call activators. So let's take a look at Grandmaster. Here he is, Grandmaster on reveal. Move one of your on reveal cards here to the middle location. Its ability happens again. And he's only two cost. This is a wild ability for a number of different reasons here. Because think of whenever you have your double effect cards, such as your Wong, your Absorbing Man, even when Iron Lad hits well, or Odin, that's a really strong effect. So to only have two cost at it, that justifies its zero power because it is going to have some big activators get power elsewhere. He doesn't need power, especially in certain archetypes. He's probably the most highly anticipated card of this month and for very good reason. But there's a couple of things that we need to talk about first. If you play him in either the left or the right, the ability will work. So he is a little bit location restrictive in that aspect because you have to have a card move. That's incredibly important. Even if it's locked down, this is not like Meek was last week where you could have it not move and they would be separate procs within the ability. These abilities are combined. That's incredibly important. Now, Cosmo's a whole nother ball game with this too, because you have to think of it very similar to how the synergy with Werewolf by Night works. If Cosmo's in the middle lane, it'll move the card to the middle, but then that ability won't go off. So it's not getting around it like Nico Minoru does with the location ability. It is just moving the card then at that point, and then it will not reproc the on reveal. This can still be good for a power move towards the end of the game, but just be careful that it's not getting around it that way. And speaking of Nico, I asked the developers, will she reproc her spells if she's moved? And the biggest question was, would this also activate a change? It does not. I have that confirmed by the magical Glenn Jones himself. So Nico's going to use that same location spell or plus two spell or destroy a card spell, whichever it may be. Remember the destroy one it will just reproc it one more time. Grandmaster is going to fit into a lot of different decks here. I mean, take a look at this. I have right now, what is it, nine decks to talk about regarding Grandmaster, including a counter. Let's just get into it. First up is a destroy deck. This is the Master of Death. And all of these deck codes, of course, will be down in the description below. So go ahead and copy your codes directly from there. This one's focusing on the idea that Venom and Deathlock and Carnage are your activators, and we're always looking for something else to become an activator. One of the reasons a lot of people don't like to play Deathlock is because he's too high power to later destroy with your Carnage when you're trying to get bigger combos out. Grandmaster gives us that flexibility of potentially doing that with multiple cards. So by having Grandmaster come on down, maybe on turn six, as a double extra synergy as Gr Carnage, Grandmaster, Wolverine, just not in that order. You understand what I'm saying, that all of those Nimrods are going to amplify tremendously and you're gonna have more and more and more of them. X-23 is in here and I was looking at different builds of Destroy that would also work in this shell. You could do a Deadpool build, but I settled on this version with Iron Lad to give a little bit more oomph to the consistency on turn four in particular, because if you hit Shuri, of course you wanna aim for Shuri and Nimrod in all possible situations with this deck. That's what the main focus of it is. But if you need to go around it the opposite direction, say you hit your Null early or you hit your uh, Deathlock and then destroy that on down, you have a couple of different options and where you can work with on turn four that I said Iron Lad actually makes a little bit of sense here, but I am exercising the idea of magic too. With the Grandmaster being a 2-0, immediately I also went to Ravona Renslayer, and there's gonna be several decks that feature Ravona that allows the Grandmaster to truly thrive. So let's first try him in a negative deck. So we're bringing over Arnim Zola and Null from the last deck and just throwing it into a Grandmaster shell because the extra Ironheart the ability to move that Black Panther even is incredibly big. Imagine having your Ironheart go once 
Grandmaster goes down, moves it into a Wong lane, so you're getting three procs of it that way. There's a couple of different ways that this could potentially work, but I love the idea of having Jane Foster also be able to pull out the Grandmaster if it becomes negatived. We have some extra play here with your Salak and Ravona, obviously, to get out your Mr. Negative. Again, we could also revisit Magic. You're going to see that as a possible play all the time with Grand Master. You're always going to want to think about it. So keep that in mind as we head into what's going to be known as probably the Grand Master meta. This deck may end up being a little evil because of Grand Master and getting a double Selene in particular is going to be evil. Enormous. Imagine playing Selene on one, then Grandmaster on two, into a now negative nine power green goblin on three. That's it. Really, really strong, and may have been one of the extra reasons why they made a change to Annihilus, because Grandmaster would have been a free card to then also toss over. I could see that in here. So Ravona makes a reappearance here. Hobgoblin for the same reasons, because that could go to a negative 14 power Hobgoblin. Even the hood, same way. You've got double demons going on here. You've got extra reductions going on here and then more negative power from Selene that could be sent over too. This may actually be what brings Selene over the top, especially now with the Selene buff with her gaining a little bit of extra power. I think that this actually has some potential to be really strong once again. This one should come as no surprise to you. I mean, it's a Silver Surfer deck. You get two Silver Surfers. Now, again, you could use magic to get extra turns out of it, so you do six and seven. But honestly, as I'm looking through the timing and the synergies and where you're getting your powers, I really don't even think it's gonna be necessary because getting that two cost proc on turn five as an option is incredible incredibly valuable as an extra play protection piece. I like this combination here without magic because getting the double Nakia or the double Okoye before we have to start worrying about Sarah is very valuable to an incredibly high Sebastian Sean as a cheap play on turn six. Doubling those activations is great. Plus the brood himself, we no longer need to focus necessarily on Absorbing Man to get it the same way because you'll be able to play it into the Brood lane, move over the original Brood, and now you've got two Broodlings and Grandmaster in one lane, which is a perfect target for the well-built Sebastian Shaw as a bigger power swing on the final turn. I think Silver Surfer is going to have some successes. We looked at different options by throwing in, for example, Gladiator instead of Shang-Chi just for some guaranteed power. How would you build your Silver Surfer deck? Hela is actually something we need to be mildly worried about once again, too. I know Eliath exists, but even with that, we're seeing a little bit, keyword, little bit less of him because we can play Invisible Woman. Think of this line for a second here. Listen to how this works. You draw four cards on turn one, nothing on turn two. Turn three, you play down your crystal. So you went from six cards drawn. Crystal gives you your seventh card drawn. Turn four, you play Grand Master. That's your draw. And now by turn four, you've drawn nine out of 12 cards. Now we could decide on turn five, oh, do we still need more time to get our combination? And then you can go on to magic on turn five. I mean, you're gonna cycle your entire deck. This is a dangerous mechanic here. And there's lots of different ways to build on the top. In my opinion, I feel like Hella actually stands a chance right now because we're going to have that extra potential card draw from Grandmaster and Crystal. I like this deck a lot because you have a 50% chance every single game to draw Crystal and then Magic in particular by turn five, you still have over a 50% chance to pull that. It's nearly a 75% chance to pull it. That is a really consistent deck. Keep an eye out for this one on ladder. Could this finally be what brings bounce back? I mean, probably not, but I'm gonna try anyway because there's more cards later on into February that are gonna really make bounce wanna come back once again. But I do think that there is a very strong shell here with Grand Master. Using that beast ability in particular a second time could be incredibly valuable. Having even just Hawkeye into Grand Master Hawkeye is going to get to that 1-4, then move to the middle, and immediately on turn three, he's going to get that ability again. So 
it's one less turn and one less dependency for Hawkeye that could lead, depending on the game, to him going as high as 13 power when all is said and done. Then of course you have your staples like Hood and Bast and your Mysterio to beef up your hit monkey with all these crazy ridiculous cheap cost cards and the Iron Man pretty solid consistently down on turn five. Even the Grandmaster could be played on turn six in conjunction with all of this. If you have a built up lane already for the Iron Man, you feel that lane is locked. You can play that hit monkey down also because Grandmaster being revealed after doesn't matter. Hit Monkey will still evaluate then twice, counting the Grandmaster both times revealed or not revealed. So playing that down could be a pretty strong synergy too. Keep an eye on how this is going to work because we could see some very big numbers once again with Bounce, and it might be just the beginning of transitioning back to having Bounce be something worthwhile again. Move is also an archetype that's really going to thrive by having another proc card because that's one of the biggest things that this deck in general looks for. We learned this from Hercules last week. What Grandmaster is going to do is have that ability re-proc for certain cards another time. For example, specifically Doctor Strange, Gamora, Beast. These are big cards to get those combos back out through turn four and five that I think is gonna be very valuable for the entire move archetype. Ramping up the brand new dagger repeatedly after bringing it back into the hand as well. That's very, very strong. So I like this because I was looking originally, for example, at a Phoenix Force variation in here. So you had a little bit of, you know, destroy insurance. You had a little bit of move insurance. But in general, I still think that using the Gamuva courtesy of Molt, uh, that Gamora turn five extra play as insurance. You have the ability to move cards prior to turn five, getting that over 10 power, which to me justifies Scar as being a 211 pretty regularly on turn six. And a lot of movement afterwards also means Miles Morales is a great turn six card too, where you could be dropping four or five cards for upwards of 25 plus power with movement and further amplification. Move is going to become better and better and better very, very soon. And I think Grandmaster is one of the first pieces to that puzzle as well. Don't skip. Don't skip. I know Meek is here. Don't worry, he can be replaced. I'm opting in for Meek in this discard deck because I want to try to get him in a standard discard deck that works. Look, you could just put in Wolverine. That's fine. But... I wanted to tweak it just a little bit here because I think the emphasis of where the power on this deck comes from is those excessive discards and to have another cheaper discard card that doesn't have necessarily a random downside to me is very valuable. It's one of the reasons I'm always hesitant to put Swordmaster into my decks. Yes, he's a very good card. He's got six on the stat line, so he kind of justifies himself, but you need RNG on your side with Grandmaster. He can target on curve even Blade, Colleen Wing and Lady Sif the same way. So you know exactly what you're going to hit right after those cards going one and then two. So I like that for this deck more than anything else right now, because then that means we've got those swarms more consistently multiplying, which to me says Meek is going to amplify higher than four power more consistently than Wolverine on his single discard. So that's why I decided to put Meek into this deck instead of Wolverine. The Collector is also going to stay in here because I also believe that the Collector is going to excel higher than eight power more regularly than Dokken would on his standard Muramasa Shard discard. So I like this balance for discard. We're going to try this one or this one again. Lastly is a counter deck for this week because Grandmaster is going to be everywhere. It's the most highly anticipated card, and it's an on reveal card that makes more on reveals happen. Play Cosmo. What else is it also going to do? Well, it's a zero, so there's going to be a lot of Ravonas. Play Mobius. So three and three C3. This is a pretty standard C3 list, making sure that we have Cosmo and Mobius so you're ready for either one of those play lines if and or when they drop. So you can defend in multiple different ways and look to get out that Cosmo early. I am going to keep magic in this deck, and I was debating about not and putting in something like a storm even, even though that's not going to be receiving the buff because then Jeff could move into it later and give a little bit more oomph if we needed it. 
I thought about it, but I'm gonna keep Magic in particular because I love the idea of still playing Valk plus a Sentinel on turn seven. So if your opponent's playing into that deck, don't play Magic. But if you're not playing into a brand new Grandmaster deck, you still then can Magic and have success with it overall. I think that it's a really solid deck. If you wanna play the new Quake instead of Jeff or instead of Sentinel, if you're that risky, go for it, have fun, because the new Quake is also fantastic. I think that's this is a good time for C3 on a defensive standpoint, because we're going to see a lot of Grandmaster. If I can sit down here and make eight decks that thrive on on reveals, you know you're going to see a lot of them, because I'm going to be one of those people playing Grandmaster decks. I'm incredibly excited for this card. I think there's a lot of cool things that are going to be coming to the game because of what Grandmaster does, and I'm excited to see what you do with Grandmaster as well. If you like today's video, hit that like and subscribe button. I greatly appreciate all the support. Otherwise, just leave some kind of emoji and let me know that you made it this far into the video. It really does help the YouTube algorithm to say, hey, it's guest gaming deserves to be watched. So thank you so much, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.